Hello and welcome to The Mariner. Today we're going to be looking at AIS and EPUB personal beacon. Two pieces of equipment which are on the market now, which go into your life jacket, go onto your person, and can be the difference between being rescued and not being rescued. Let's check out the difference. start with the ACR Rescue Q Link Plus, which is a big way of saying a personal safety device which can send a message to a satellite which can save your life. So how would this be used for sailors? This would be inside a pack of equipment that you've got with you. It's too big really to go into your life jacket, but it may be in a little pouch or it may be in a pocket, something like that, something where it's secured to you and can't be lost. The function of this is uh, very similar to the EPUB that you've got on your boat. So EPUB is Electronic Position Indicating Radio Beacon. This sends a 406 megahertz signal up to a satellite where it's received. And in the old days when these first came out, basically the satellite would just say, ah, there's somebody down there that needs my help in this general zone. The newer ones, like the Rescue Link, has got a GPS built into it. That's become pretty standard these days with EPUBs. It sends a GPS position accurate to within a couple of meters. So the satellite receives the signal, it knows exactly where you are, and then when it crosses a little bit further and gets above its land station, it sends down that message, which then goes to the Joint Rescue Services, and they can start to mobilize towards you. I have uh, personal EPUBs on the boat, I have the EPUB for the boat, and I have the AIS beacons which we're going to be discussing next. These I use when I am far offshore. So I use a personal EPUB system when I'm at sea deep ocean. The AIS beacons are incredible if you're in more kind of crowded waterways, if you're close to shipping lanes and out cruising, but if you get further afield then you need something that's going to go directly to a satellite. The problem with that obviously is that help is going to come much more slowly than if it came from surrounding boaters. So the mini EPUBs like this, the personal EPUBs, this is your final like big hammer at the bottom of the toolbox. Nothing else has worked. You can't get anybody's attention. You don't see anybody around you. You can pop this guy and maybe you've got an option on getting rescued anyway. Let's jump inside and see how this works. Okay, so to activate this kind of unit, we first see that the antenna is wrapped around the outside of it. It's spring steel, so you just got to keep it away from your eyes, but you just flick the corner here and it comes undone. And then we take this and lever it up. And you can see this one's got a couple bits of salt on it. This has actually been in use. This is equipment we actually use. It's not just unboxed and showing you. On the side here, we've got the power button and we've got the test button. So if we want to test to make sure the unit's okay, we press and hold the T button between two and five seconds. That first flash means that it's activated the self-test function. We've got a couple flashes going on there, which means it's doing an internal test of its CPU and GPS. And then the strobe light indicates the completion of a successful self-test. So just that little thing, every couple of weeks, just make sure it's okay. If you need to use it in anger, onto the side here and the power button, press and hold that for two seconds and that will activate the unit and then it will start to send the signal and uh, hopefully the satellite will pick it up. When you're done with that, if you are turning it back off, press and hold again, we'll cancel the operation, and then we can put away the antenna. There's something important to say though about switching on and switching off these kind of units. One of the details you wanna discuss with any kind of EPUB operation, whether it's a personal EPUB or the larger one on your vessel, is that once that power button's been pressed, once you've actually gone into a, an operation cycle and the signal is being sent, it is being received somewhere. The system is not just what's in your hand here. It's being received by rescue services, by joint services in Falmouth if you're registered in the UK or up here in Newport if you're in North America. Once this is set off, um, somebody somewhere sees it on a screen and they are now thinking that there may well be an issue. Now clearly, if your EPUB is being set off and it's doing 100 kilometers an hour going down the highway, they can probably imagine that it's accidentally been set off in the back of a car or something. But if you're by the water, if you're on the water, and it accidentally gets set off, don't just immediately turn it back off again. What the best thing to do is to know where your licensing authority is, where this is being received, who it is that you're relying on for your rescue, that's good to know anyway. Get their telephone number, you should have it on the documents of the boat anyway, and then phone and say, hey, it's me, I've set off my EPUB, I'm in the middle of wherever you are. There'll be a hexadecimal number, or a long number on the back of your EPUB, which you can then give to them, and they will say, yes, I see it on my screen. They'll then say to you, in five, four, three, two, one, I want you to turn this off. 
you turn it off, they will see it go off their screen and then they'll cancel any kind of response which was being engineered to come and get you. If I'm out there just on the mooring, it could be that you know I'm trapped and I need help and this is actually a reasonable way of getting some help. Like if I'm out there and my phone's dead, I'm trapped under something heavy or whatever it is, or I'm stuck up the mast, this is a way of getting help. Like this is a legit method of getting help wherever you are in the world. But if you've accidentally turned it on, do the rescue services a favor, call them and tell them, and then they will help you to turn it back off and nobody is gonna have a problem with it. The issue is if you don't do that and then they turn up in a helicopter above your house, they're not gonna be that happy with you. Okay, so EPUBs and uh, these particular personal EPUBs are a fantastic option if you're far away from boats, far away from potential help, and you wanna get some kind of assistance. This is what I use when I'm deep ocean. The other option, of course, is the AIS beacon. Let's have a look at how that works. So the other kind of beacon we've got is an AIS beacon. These are very new, you can see they're very slim, and these are designed to go into the side of the life jacket. A lot of the new modern life jackets have got a little zipper down the side, and that's so you can get this guy in and out, service it, see what's going on uh, without having to unpack the entire life jacket. Now I've got a life jacket here, we can see how it connects, and we can see potentially how this thing gets activated. Okay, so AIS beacons go inside your life jacket. You can activate them in your hand if you want, but the best place to have them is inside the life jacket. Not too heavy, just weighs about 500 grams, maybe not even that. Uh, not too much extra to put into your life jacket, but they come in and they clip onto the refill tube here or the top-up tube here. It's got a little clip on the side of it, clips onto here. And then we've got this long ribbon and the ribbon runs around the back of the bladder. comes into the other side of the beacon and then we just put the ribbon through these little slots and buckle it down as you might do. A lot of things on the life jackets are already working on buckles so it's an appropriate kind of technology. Doubled over there and then tucked back through for a third time so that it doesn't come undone. So once the ribbon's around, we're in a situation where should the life jacket inflate, this obviously is gonna get a lot bigger in volume and then it's gonna pull hard on this little piece of plastic that's behind this clear screen and that's gonna activate both the electronics of the system and it's gonna release the antenna. So I'll get this tucked away in here, we'll repack the life jacket and then let's see this thing going off and how it can be useful. Okay, I'm gonna activate this uh, life jacket now. Now I know it's got an AIS beacon in it and I know that the antenna on that beacon is a piece of spring steel which is gonna whip out. So I'm gonna close my eyes while I do this because I don't wanna get hit by it. Okay, let's have a go. Life jack is inflated perfectly, which is great. We can see the back toe system here, but we can see also my AIS beacon is flashing. It's partially armed, but this line that goes around the back of the uh, bladder here, somehow it's got kind of wedged at the top and it's not kind of gone off. So I'm gonna give it a hand. There we go. So now the antenna's undone. So. The systems on these, it's good to run it. We put this one in here for, exam for, for the example this morning. I know how these things uh, work and that it might need that extra pull. It's just trying to use the inflation of the life jacket to pull that pin out to activate the thing. If it gets caught up too much on the whistle and on the um, inflation valve here, it can get stuck. But look, a quick flick and now I've got myself an AIS beacon which is sending out a message to all nearby mariners, to all nearby ships, telling them that I'm in the water, I've got an issue. I have a feeling that that little amount that it was stuck by would have probably been quite easy to um, just give it a pull and it go in a real life situation. Um, definitely worth trying on your jacket and seeing how it works. But even with that little extra bit of uh, effort required, I'm now in a very strong situation. I'm able to float, I'm able to be seen. I've got my lights here. I've got my spray shield around the back. I can pull that over my head if I wanna uh, protect myself from the waves. Um, and so from this situation, I'm on the surface of the water. The antenna is up, I don't know. Is it perfectly up? Oh, you've got some things for you to do whilst you've got your morale building tunes and you can get your little antenna straight and then sit there knowing that people can see you, that they can see that you're in the water and that you need assistance. This is a light year forward from where we were even 20 years ago where you go in the water and unless someone shines a torch on you or they hear this tiny little whistle, you are gone. So this is incredible technology. You can see that the activation method on these is still a little bit finickety, um, but this is better than having it in your pockets. It's better than having it in some part of your waterproofs. And as soon as we can get that antenna straight, you know that helps on its way. Okay, so we've got the life jacket now, which we've just uh, blown up. We can have a look closer at the mechanism. We even problem solve what went wrong so we can pack this life jacket better next time 
with the AIS uh, beacon on board. The beacon is up alongside the uh, refill tube here and we can see that this ribbon runs around the back of the bladder, comes in onto the back side here and then is buckled through. I think what happened when that one went off is that as the jacket inflates, this area of the beacon, it needs to pull out smartly to the side and in a flat plane. But because the life jacket's inflating, it ends up pulling it somewhat down and around this gear. So I think options are maybe the whistle was in here before, the whistle was definitely creating a few extra complications. It was kind of here. Maybe though what we could do is put the, uh, the little lanyard for the beacon on top of the whistle and then when it pulls, it'll pull it more flat. I think this was inside here before and it all got wedged inside that area. But if we take that away from now and just have a see what's going on, as this gets pulled, this little clear shield on the front will flick out of the way and then this little gray area will release the antenna and we'll start the mechanism inside. So we pull here and it comes. Away goes my clip. And then we can see now that the strobe is flashing, which is, you know, there's a little light there, it might be helpful, but mostly it's showing you that there's operation in the unit. The antenna is standing up pretty straight and the thing is starting to send its signal. In terms of finishing up with it, it's very easy. We don't have to be so worried about people from the Coast Guard turning up with helicopters with an AIS unit like this. The EPIRB one going up to the satellite, much more likely for that to be going to some kind of Coast Guard uh, or the MCA that's gonna then want to come and help you. This is much more about local boaters. So when this thing fires, this will come up on the chart plotters of boats that are around you. And if you switch it back off again, well, kind of the problem's over. For this unit, we just need to press and hold the T button. That's also our test button if we want to test the function without activating everything. Now the unit's off. Now it's time to get this antenna wound away. To do that, the manufacturer supplies this little uh, knob thing here with a slit and a hole in the end of it. That's going to capture the antenna and allow us to wind it up. Once the antenna goes into this space, we can push this little knob down from the top, put the two slits on either side here, just capturing part of the antenna, and then we can start to wind the thing up. So in it goes there, Oop. get him inside, get the little knob and slide it onto part of the antenna, and then we just start turning. And this rolls away the spring steel antenna. And the next part then is we get the gray slide, which is over here right now. This would still be attached to the life jacket. And we take the top of it, which has got the little symbol here for do not hurt your eyes, and we hook this into here, holding the antenna in position. We can release the little knob and now everything is back where we started. We get our little clear cover, which we found like miles away over there. We take this, pop it over the top, and then everything is back to where it was and the unit is armed and ready to operate. So this is a fantastic device. We can see there that the operation, you need to make sure that it works on your life jacket. I'm definitely gonna modify my method by putting it across the top of the whistle. But once that's activated, maybe with a little bit of help from you, this gives you so many more options than we've ever seen before to be rescued from the water. Okay, so let's have a compare the two different pieces of equipment we've got here. We can see that the uh, ACR Rescue Link Plus Personal EPUB is a device which has to be manually activated. We've got to flick this thing here, get the antenna to come up, release it from the sides and do this. All of this is something you're gonna to have to do for yourself. Plus it's gonna to need to be held above the water on your life jacket or held with you wherever you are. This is definitely a lot of investment by you to, to make this thing happen. We can see with the MOB beacon from uh, Ocean Signal here, the AIS beacon, that still it's not perfect. It may still need a little bit of assistance. Um, the way that it's deployed is uh, automatic with your life jacket and you've got a pretty good chance of that happening. I just had to kind of give it a little tug and it went off. Um, but there's two different strategies at work here. The EPIRB unit is sending a signal to a satellite, so you can really be found almost anywhere on the surface of the planet, but it's gonna take time for the rescue services to connect with local vessels, to tell them where that GPS signal was coming from, and to get them to come to you. The AIS unit, if you're sailing in areas with a lot of different boats, a lot of different little small navigable channels, when this goes off, a lot of people are gonna be looking at their chart plotter and wondering, what's this alarm? What's this new little symbol that's on there? Much more likely this is gonna happen. If this system is then tied into your boat's uh, AIS system on your VHF 
um, and it's able to raise an alarm on the boat when it's activated, so much the better. But it is essential that the people on board the boat know how this works, that you're in an area where, yeah, there might be a lot of boats out there, but they're actually looking at their AIS chart, are they actually taking notice of the different symbols? This may end up being brilliant if you're in an area with lots of professional sailors and almost useless if you're with a lot of people that are doing fishing, windsurfing, rowing, and are not really looking at a chart plotter with the same degree of professionalism. What I use these for is that I have both. I have this one inside my life jacket, but I am not wearing my life jacket all the time when I'm offshore. I do a lot of solo sailing, and the issue with life jackets normally is that you are in the water with a life jacket, who's gonna come back and get me? This one has only got limited use, so I always have one of these inside my pouch with me. The life jacket that I'm using now is the Timo Bacto life jacket, and that has transformed somewhat the way that I use a life jacket because it gives me another option when I'm in the water to be towed backwards and then to get myself back onto the boat. At that point, my life jacket is with me. Why wouldn't I have this inside? Now, price comparison, they're about the same. For full transparency, the link's at the bottom in the description of this video, link to Amazon, and that does benefit the channel. This is one of the ways that we can keep this going. But either is available. Prices are very similar, different manufacturers for each, but the EPUB units are better for offshore when there's less people around, and this kind of thing, the AIS beacon, fantastic if you're in somewhere like the Solent, or Long Island Sound, or off Florida, or off Texas, places where people know boating, they're looking at the chart plotter, they've got a good understanding of what they're looking at, this could really be the difference between life and death. So weigh them up for yourself, Maybe do what I do, which is to put both in my pockets and go to sea, and then hopefully you don't have to ever be in the circumstance which I always dread, which is sitting behind in the water, looking at that little white light disappearing into the distance, realizing nobody's coming to get you. Grab one of these, get safe, and then when you get on the water, you can be relaxed and enjoy yourselves. I hope that that was useful for you. Please go down below, like, subscribe, ring the bell, that kind of stuff really helps the algorithm to recognize what's going on with our channel, to grow what's happening here. Send us your comments as well. Tell us what other equipment you want to have a review done. These are real world reviews. You can see there are little initials on the back of these. There's salt on here. We use this gear. We're using it for thousands of miles a year. We'd be happy to share with you everything we've learned. Cheers. Hello and welcome to The Mariner. Today we're gonna to be looking at two different pieces of equipment that allow you to make a very important decision when you go to sea. Do you wanna to go to your friend's funeral or do you want your friends to come to your funeral? <laughs> <laughs> or is that, should I do one that's a bit more? so serious. <laughs>